Welcome to No Shame, episode 102. So today I have somebody on that I actually knew that you would be sitting in this seat someday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't think as soon, to be honest. So I have world champion kickboxer, multiple world champion. I can't even amount the amount of fucking things that you've won in kickboxing. And MMA world silver medalist. Yeah. So she's number two in the world now, so we gave her 102. She wanted 101. <laughs> We say it's 102 for you. <laughs> Welcome to the No Shame Podcast, Shauna. Thanks Shawnee. so much. Thank you. So if you don't know Shauna, Shauna has been doing... Do you know what? It was actually hit me the weekend because we, we only got back from Bahrain, the World Championships, and now it's a whole new fucking book on its own. <laughs> it's right. Mad. But Good week, though. You, someone asked you how long are you kickboxing and she turns around and goes, 20 years, and I've ever been like, what the fuck? It's actually more. It's 23. <laughs> 23 years? Since I'm three, yeah. Kickboxing. So this all started... I remember, right? Uh, driving past St. Mark's Club, or St. Mark's School, and I was going to at the time, and like you'd always see in the window. Yeah, and Tuesdays even, and Thursdays. Yeah, and like I actually kind of reference, uh, I, I, I talk about the martial arts things in my book, and like, yeah, dad's one's one of them, it's not mentioned in it, but I remember walking past there and I used to be with my man and all, and I used to be looking at Mark and he'd take me in there to do karate. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Karate, that's what everyone calls it. But I don't consider kickboxing as karate, it's mad. Yeah, for, when you're looking in, it's like Yeah, karate. yeah, yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? How did that start? Because, like, so Martin, the legend, Bannon, what, tell me about your dad. Ah, my dad's a little legend. Legend, legend, yeah. Now, I started when I was like three, but like it would have been kind of just maybe in the gym and then I started down the classes, but I was like a little messer for years. I didn't take it seriously until I was about 11. Like, I used to get suspended from the gym and all. Yeah, suspended from his own gym? Suspended, and he'd be like, next time you're getting expelled. <laughs> I swear to God, me and Lisa used to get separated from one end of the class to the other because we used to just mess. That's Dave's door. Oh, Lisa, really? yeah, yeah. So we were messes for years. Didn't really take it seriously. And then when I was 11, I kind of just like started going full on, training every day. Taking it like super I can't serious. As bad, me own because me own. You know, we nearly have to kill him sometimes. Yeah. Like, well, just stop it. You're supposed to be the example. I know. People like have told my dad that they left the club over me, and all. Oh. That's how bad I was. I was a little brat. And what did he say? Fair play to you for admitting it. You now, like he'll straight out, he'll tell people now as well. Even then, because I used to do the senior class when I was younger as well. Like if my ma was in work or something, I'd do the senior class as well. And they, like people have said they they left because of me messing. So you're basically like a product of your environment if you think of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know. You are, like, so you're like so a lot of the kids now that like, would be getting raised in the gym now, like and you'd see it on Instagram and, and like so say people like people like King Cowley would have been raised in the gym and yeah. and like moist like, mo- mo- like uh, Seamus now. Yeah, yeah. Is yeah. being raised in the gym. You so, just don't know anything different. Like it's just like kicking and punching as normal. Even it, though it's not really like so that's, uh, cause I was only saying to Chelsea about like when I was going away, she used to be like, like, Yeah, dad's gone on holidays and I'm like, you have to stop saying that because like he's gonna hate me thinking like my dad goes on holidays all the time and I don't know whether like my oldest son turning thinks that yeah, yeah so they're like, not holidays at oh, all far from holidays at all all you see is the hotel and the sports hall that's oh, about it and, it's, and it's, buses smelly you buses you must have done a million trips up to, so when did you when did you realise that you were like you were really good at it um, I kind of still even though I was a messer I kind of still always won when I was younger <laughs> Jenny, <laughs> you are like that person that didn't study but still got the results yeah like kind of but I then I remember the wackos they brought the wackos in for juniors when I was like 11 and I didn't go no sorry I would have been 12 and I didn't go to the first one the first one I went to was when I was 13 the next year and I remember I came toward and like it was like the most heartbreaking thing ever and like ever since then I just became obsessed like I just wanted to be the best at it and then the next year I came back it was in Croatia that year and I got double gold in the points of continuous uh-huh. and ever since then it was kind of just like I went away I always just kind of done the worlds and Europeans prior to that there was like um, an organisation called WKA I don't know if you ever heard of it they had that for uh-huh. like kids then so we would have done that for years but I never really like I went on the trips but I actually would have considered them as a holiday then would you yeah, yeah. <laughs> going on my holidays but like not even thinking about the fighting but like after that then that loss uh, when I was 13 at my first back I was like killed me and I just like motivated me so much that stubbornness that kicked in at that yeah. time like, I remember know? like I was in hysterics crying I was puking and all because I was crying that much and it was just like it was like something just clicked in me and I was like I need to be deadly at this and to go and do um, and, and I, I think you've just kept the standard then from after that didn't you yeah like I used to then travel a lot like so my dad wouldn't really come to all the international tournaments with me because I used to go to that many so I like I was travelling from a young age at all the international tournaments like about five a year six seven and then as the years went on I used to go to all of them I'd be away nearly every month and so you've been have you been paying like you've been how much money do you reckon that you've spent on like sans- Thousands. Hundreds of thousands, yeah. probably. Yeah, hasn't it? Because like there's no fun in kickboxing, is there? None. 
none at all like and a trip would cost like let's say if we were going to Belgium like 600 euro realistically per trip like in and around 500, 600 and I was down that every month sometimes twice a month Jesus that's a grand old life isn't it we yeah, hadn't even left that. That was sound, wasn't he? Yeah, you were that. Yeah, but it, <laughs> and it, it, it's only when you look in hindsight, isn't it? Like yeah, at the time, yeah. at the can... time, I quite well. No, I was always, I did appreciate it, but like, and then even sometimes, like, because I was going away that often, I'd be like, "Can I get this trip for my birthday? Like, I'm going to the World Cup. Can I get that for my birthday or for Christmas? You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, that's what you had to do because you couldn't just go to the mall and then expect them because they did all add up. Do you know what I mean? Where's A the weirdest place you've been? Where's the furthest weirdest place you've been in kickbox for kickboxing? Um. You'd be in Korea? Uh, yeah, that was for Taekwondo. See, the trips with kickboxing, they always kind of were in the same place. So the the World Cups and all would be on the same country every year. So there'd be a couple of different World Cups. Italy, Belgium. Um, like a lot of the wackos would have been on in Italy. So I was in like li- li- a lot of parts of Italy. And where else would it go? I don't really think we were I remember you saying places. to me about Italy. Like, no, so think about someone from Springfield or I... And then you, I remember you saying to me you were down in, um, was it Sicily? Yeah, Staying down unreal there. that is. Like, what an experience. Yeah. I was there for a training camp as well for like two weeks, unreal. Like just training in the morning, going to the beach, going out on the, the boats and all and then going back training. But that's where the mob are from. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Man, it's a mad place over there, but it's, it's nice. You fuck around. I cut you with the fishies, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and you were down there, King, I wouldn't have survived that trip. Like I would have messed up at that age, and I would have ended up sleeping with the fishies in Sicily. Yeah, yeah the old country, as they call it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's very like it. But like cool. that—that's a great example for the idea of of kids getting involved in sports. Like, yeah. Because you can never say where you're gonna go. You just like it, it's like a rolling ball, isn't it? It just goes, and all of a sudden you end up in these places. Like I say about uh, martial arts, people are like, "Wait, now what?" And it's like, "There's no, there's no, there's no set path." It no. just rolls just and all happens, doesn't it? You end up in these places. But you have to go with it where people that like they they like they fear and they just don't go. Yeah. You're better off just going for it, aren't you? Definitely, yeah. Like I never like I never really had fear with kickboxing. It's mad. I think because I was down from such a young age, it was just like normal competing to me. Like obviously different tournaments. I remember one time where I actually shit myself. Like I was at the combat games and I don't know what came over me. I was walking out and I was at the thing and I was like, Dad, I can't walk. Yeah. And I remember like the first round, I don't even know what I was doing. Like I was just standing there and I was like, totally forgot how to fight. Like it was froze completely. And then it wasn't until like halfway through the second round I actually started fighting. And then I was like, shit, I need to win this. Come on, Sean. Well, that, that can happen. Like, Cause uh, I always explain that, that fight, flight, a phrase. And nobody really gets that part, the phrase part. And that is the that scariest. Like at least fighting, you're fighting. And running sometimes like uh, in fighting, I think you kind of take a few shots and you quit. That's yeah, running and fighting. Yeah, yeah. But then the freezing part, we are like, I can't close my hands. I know. And, was ma- and I think she was just as nervous as well. And we would have, the girl, she was from Hungary. I would have fought her a good few times, but like, like I got like a shitty end of the draw the way the draw went I don't even know what happened but all the good people were up one end and then there was like a couple of shit people down the other end not it shit was, but it was not up, as good it was upside the down be- yeah the and back. I was just like I had her on my first fight I was like why couldn't I have got anyone else for her like because she was tough like we used to always have real close fights I think that's why and we both knew we were looking at each other and we both knew and we were both shit <laughs> it's just like ah could you imagine Robin could you imagine bumping into Charlotte in a club and like kicking off or some and getting a fucking spinning round kills to the house like imagine trying to get over that in your life <laughs> Has that ever happened? That's how Josh oh. was only saying about Saturday night. I don't know why, I just love sparring when I'm drunk. He was sparring on the other night, Now it was all done and all over He was like, I, I had him in a guillotine and he was like, Sean, you wouldn't let go, I thought I was going to go to sleep. <laughs> and, I was like, imagine and, that in a nightclub, wake up! She's leaving Lee Hammond, she's going to Lee Hammond. You're a little bitch, you are. See if you do that little thing with your elbow, you're a little bitch, you are. And I was like, and when I heard that, I was like, oh my God. Like, I was like, just engage with him. He's an animal. And he was like, a coin have landed. I landed, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had, kind of was just looking at me and then he was like oh yeah alright okay <laughs> she kind of knows what she's talking about could have made a few quid out, out of that if you sold tickets that would have been a pay per view yeah like, and I'm telling you like, this is in Bahrain so it's people some mad little pub <laughs> yeah some mad little pub Ricks it was it was a great yeah. little spot next time that happens give me a shout I'll set up a stream on- <laughs> <laughs> don't on do the- that I'll get more motivated I'll be like yeah. who's next <laughs> Robin's on the ball Robin yeah. is on the ball so you're forced so um, I think the biggest thing you won was that was it last year or the year before because that had to be hard to step away as well yeah I kind of knew it was me last what were you the grand champ master champ of the champs I won uh, the world in points continuous and then I got Best uh, athletes of the tournament as well. Oh, like, what about? That's a good day. We're gonna do at the podcast someday. 
best athlete or best podcast best podcast yeah but the, the biggest podcast the most listen to podcast three of them in a row we're going to do one yeah. day we're going to do that the and we're going to play that this clip back then absolutely because <laughs> you were only saying that we're playing back clips there uh, randomly falls that the second podcast that we ever did was uh, yeah. a world silver medalist and it was Danny Neal yeah that's just freaky alien shit how that just came to episode later. one Episode one, an adventurer, Damien Brown. Episode 101, an adventurer, uh, Derek Cullen. Outdoors last week. Yeah, so the two of them are starting lining up. For episode you. one, episode two, Danny Nealon, silver medal, world championships. Episode 102, Sean O'Bannon. He's, he's the best like, encyclopedia he is with really. you know I mean? it. You're asking, ask Robin. Yeah. They, they, but Derek, that was a serious, serious story, wasn't it? Last week, a guy walking around, like, got pissed off, walked outside his job. If you haven't seen last week's, like, and you're just I've seen a little clip, job, but I haven't watched the yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he just walked out of his job he did and decided to cycle around Africa on a 150 euro bike. Legend. He still has the bike. That's what <laughs> I found. He has it back in his shed, he does. 150 euro. He said it was in bits, wrong size, and he's cycling up to these little villages. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> the chain hanging off. And, off. and some lad going out. What the fuck is happening, Declan? Do you know what I mean? And there's some, like, so, say the tribes and stuff like that. He was cycling through, like, uh, uh, NIMBY and all, whatever that, that, that country is. On his own. On his own. Just look, went there, walk, and just literally was going to blow the top. And I was saying to him, I reckon a lot of the people that do blow the top are the people that say have a mortgage and kids and wives and are standing in the shoes. He was standing outside, walk. Yeah. And, like, they're the people that we never get to, like, visual. Like, they're the people that sadly probably probably die by suicide and just never make it and it was only said to him he was like shit you know what yeah. I mean but it's true though it, it, it is true but do you know what we had for episode 3 who Owen Roddy Owen Roddy Owen did Roddy. we yeah Deadly. so Deadly. Uh, I reckon the next podcast that was our second biggest podcast of all the time Listen. So our next podcast has to be like our second biggest podcast uh, listen of all the time. next week's <laughs> podcast keep up with it I am not messing it's the best podcast in the country. Hey, what about my podcast? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Well, we just Second best. Two. You could still be number one with this, Sean. So, then you went on to Taekwondo. So, yeah. I remember, right, we were moving through with the... Um, in the centre at the same time. Now, obviously, we knew you from around... Uh, the, look, we lived in you were across the road. I knew you, you were in school, I think, a few years below me. And, um, yeah. and I always knew that you were really, really good at kickboxing, you know what I mean? And I used to look at you like, mm, how the... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> how is she this world champion? Like, she doesn't look like it. You know? And you know, now me black eye. Yeah. You know, no, like, can... <laughs> there, like me, you know what I mean? At the end, you're like... <laughs> no, it was just like, I remember when I was in fourth year, there was a young one in sixth year and... Uh, just wanted to fight me for no reason. No reason, just wanted to fight me after school. And then, like, we ended up having a fight, like, walking down the road, wa- walking up from school, and she just hopped to me. And you have to just fight back. And then, because I was getting the better of her and she was in sixth year, it was kind of like, oh. That's always the way it is. Yeah, all that tough Mad. girl shit goes out the window yeah. real quick, doesn't it? Yeah, but now there was a couple of incidents. And we were swinging kicks and all. You have to, don't you? Get up, out. I remember one time, she's like, man, like, what's the story? Well, in, and then my mum be giving out to me, but I was like, it's actually not me, I'm just defending no, myself. I'm surprised Lane wasn't out there with a brick and a handbag <laughs> smacking the heads off people. I won't fuck with her. <laughs> well, I'd fuck with Martin before I'd fuck with Lane. Yeah, same, probably. I can tell boy. <laughs> I can tell boy. you don't mess with her. You just walk boy and nod, all right, Lane. You know what I mean? Uh, if you haven't seen it, you're, oh, you're the hooky. Up. We should hook you up, Sean's man. <laughs> you know I mean? she got a boy, has she got a boyfriend? No. No. Sean's man. There you Check are, her man. out. We're going to tag her in the podcast. I'm not going to say anything because you've just told me Shauna Bannon is a killer. She's a killer. I'm not going to say anything about Shauna. Our <laughs> 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 oh, family's killer. Our You're trying to set right. me up for a fall here, Paddy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, say it, Robin. I like, dare you. <laughs> um, and your sister Nicole as well. She's going to the World Championships on uh, Saturday. And she's a world champion as well. Yeah. Do you know what breaking into your gaff would be like? Do you remember uh, the three ninja kids? What was it? Tum Tum, Toad and... Uh, do you remember that? No. They go to the grand- do you remember that? No. Oh, try to get a clip and add it in there where we I'll are. get it up, yeah. You're showing your age there, Pat. <laughs> oh, oh, if you haven't seen this... He's not that much older than me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're practically the same age. I'm just bet more. You're showing our age, Paddy. You're showing our age. Yeah, our age, yeah. But listen, if you... Ha- if anyone knows the three ninja kids, all right, it's three kids and they're in that house and there's like these crooks coming after them and they're with their granddad and their granddad's like this master thing. Uh, Tum Tum, Rocky and Toad. That's what it is. Tum Tum, Rocky and Toad and they're these three kids and I'm not messing. It's one of the best films. I remember seeing it as a kid. Really? Look, I think this is where probably you got me me martial arts thing yeah, from. Yeah, watching this. I was obsessed with like uh, films like this and I remember just being like, 
be so cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to be like that. Yeah. I remember asking my ma for Christmas for a karate room. Right? <laughs> in my head, I had this picture that she could we could build a room into a karate room and have a box room. And it was a box bedroom in Jobstown. And like, I was ambitious. <laughs> like, <laughs> I used to have drawings and all for this, but may, maybe that's where the kind of came from, from them little small yeah, things. But definitely. breaking into your gaff would be like that. You can imagine that. Elaine, <laughs> you, and the cowl murdering someone in right imagine. here. No, I don't think so. I'm having a call to someone was breaking into the house before and she was like screaming, crying. Ah! <laughs> Froze completely. But you don't know what you do. But then another time, I thought someone was breaking into the house. I was like, what? Who is it? <laughs> really? No one even there. Just parrot. That me. happened to me. It's in the bo- it's in my book. It's a story in my book. That oh, happened yeah, to yeah, me. Oh, yeah, I read that. Yeah, hey, Living yeah. around the corner from your house I was. Yeah. So, and I remember that the mad thing was I knocked around to a few houses and they were like, Looking at me like, get out of my garden on me. Oh, I'm trying to fix this house and stay here. Do you know what I mean? I'm going <laughs> right down back to Joe's house. Like, that's mad. We oh, packed me bag and went in back to Joe's house. And all he was, and then didn't even run, just oh, strolling. I had to him. fight him in the yeah. house. I'm fighting him on the landing. I'm fighting him in the garden. And the neighbour comes out and starts going, get away from your scumbag. That's and mad. Mental it was. Didn't Mental. even care. Just strolling around. Oh, I was the oh, like I was the victim, and I'm telling you, everyone treated me like the criminal in the whole situation. Even when the guard came to the door, the guard was like, uh, so what happened? I was like. But he broke into the house. No, 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 after that. Well, then he was upstairs. No, after that. <laughs> and he was like, you're trying to get to the bit where I hear him. That's nuts. Mental. Absolutely mental. And anyway. Imagine someone just strolling to your house casually, like, and then not even running in when they see it. Oh, this fella. Like, now, Mads. listen. I, I don't, to, to be doing something like that, when I'm a little bit older now, to be doing something like that, you literally have to have some shit. I, I feel sorry for people like that now. Yeah, yeah. You know, because at the time, you're just like, get out of me gaff. definitely wasn't all right. Like. Yeah, like, like to, to live that life is like, Imagine being bored with a demon in a way, like where you have to go into people's houses to, to take. Like, I've heard a story, right? Me mate Macca told me, and his, his that man, that mad religious, like now Macca is far from religious, but his, <laughs> his dad's friend, right? Caught someone breaking into the house and he went downstairs and he met the guy and he said, Don't run, don't run. And he stopped him and he gave him everything. He gave him his DVD player, his, I think it was a video player at the time, gave him his toaster, gave him money, and said to the guy, Do you need anything else? You know no what I mean? Way. And he said, like, the guy was shocked. And we, uh, Macca's dad... Coming back here again. <laughs> no, no, yeah, he's like, we'll be back next Tuesday, mate. Why don't I put these in the car? <laughs> and he turns around, because he said, he was telling this at, uh, at Mass, his dad's mate was telling the story, like, and he says, my logic was that if he's to break it into someone's house to take this stuff, and we have all of this stuff, like, he must really need it. Yeah. Or he must, he's going to realise that he doesn't need it. And I remember being like, I wish we had that power. Yeah, like, imagine no. that, being able to do that. Like fair play, to it wouldn't be crazy. Me. So um, obviously you win everything in kickboxing, and that has to be a situation where you're like, mm, like what is next? That's what it was. What is next? Kept getting told for years and years. It's gonna be in the Olympics. It's gonna be in the Olympics. It's gonna be in the Olympics. It's gonna be in it. And then it just never was. We never got the recognition. Like so, I was like, I need something more because I was after winning the worlds a few times, winning the Europeans. <laughs> sorry, winning the Europeans, and I was like, then I won the combat games. That was like a step up from that, and then back down the world in your opinion. So it was just nothing else and I was fighting the same people and I was like I need something else so then I was like maybe I'll try taekwondo because I was good at kicking but uh, I'd done that for about a year and a half I'd say was still down kickboxing at the time then the November was my last kickboxing tournament in the world I, I decided then I was going to just go 100% taekwondo but uh, it just wasn't for me I missed the punching and all yeah yeah Cause I started good too punches. late as well. Yeah. I, like, for I was my aim for I wasn't just down it for fun. I was down it to go to the Olympics. Yeah, and I remember seeing you training for that, and I remember being like, I oh, admire that. I oh, admire that. Like to be able to just like to want more after getting it all, because like, it's very easy to rest on your laurels if you must. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and it's like it's it, it taekwondo. If you know it, it's they wear the sensors, so they have like their guard on the head guard, the socks, and there's magnets in them. Oh, really? Right. So you have to connect them like based on your weight. It's a certain strength. And you have to connect it with a certain amount of like impact for them to score. So I was milling people with side kicks and all, falling on the floor, and it wasn't scoring. But like roundhouse kicks would have been more scored. Like a body kick, like yeah, like with the, this part of your foot, okay. with the heels wouldn't, because there's less magnets in your heels. It was just like, just wasn't working for me. I was losing, and then some I might get a couple of wins, and 
the ranking points were kind of building up but they weren't where they needed to be for me to qualify for the Olympics so my only real chance would have been for the qualifiers so two people from Europe get to go based on the qualifiers so I think that's actually taking place soon now for the one for 2020 but uh, and you're training with you're training with Jack Woody which yeah. one, like, and if you don't know Jack Jack is an Absolute. animal we're going to get Jack on sometime when I am and he's a like the, I seen a clip from the other day and I was like how did like, it look like he had his leg in his hand? I can't even count the amount of times that he's kicked me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> you lose count after 20 like, kicks. Literally, he used to be just like boom, 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 boom on my head. And I was like, ah, oh, will you just give it a rest? Jack? Like, yeah, like he's like, he's off like, me head. You know he's, like? he's like the guy out of, um, what's that film with uh, Adam or uh, Adam Sandler in it? And he's like the special agent. He's like, this is first the uppercut. And his legs are coming out That's of it. His leg is just like spaghetti. What's just, that called? I can't remember the film. Ah, he's ridiculous, Sandler, absolutely. Who yeah, else? Unreal. He's, He'll he's like, be... he, he wants to cut people's hair in the film he does. I make you silky smooth. This is what he says. <laughs> but he's a superhero, or he's a super, uh, he's a, like, <clears throat> a villain or something like that he is from somewhere. But uh, that's who Jack reminds me of. Because in the film he's like, yeah, no, he's incredible. And he and was a great what? training partner. Like, I probably progressed a lot quicker because I had him as a training partner. Do you know what I mean? Like, of, out of all the people in Ireland and all the gyms, it was right on my doorstep, and he was in it, and he's the only person that's going to go to the Olympics. And like. it's still there as well. So if you if you are looking for like, uh, don't mess with the Zohan. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. How much is that like, like Jack yeah. Woolley? Image. That's what would call him? We should crop his face. Jack the that. Zohan Woolley. That's what <laughs> I would call him. But like, and uh, the, the martial that um, martial arts club is is they only to moving into a new one because that was. Oh great. yeah, they have their full time place and now. We were all moving at the same time. You know what yeah. I mean? Because Rob was moving and I was moving and the two was all conversating and it was like it was very where it was because like um, it, everything was just going to go in the same direction where he was going his way I was part of him with his like and he was kind of wishing me where we was that's that's the way it's supposed to be done yeah. you know what I mean um, what was I going to say to you Robin the stuff the sensors that she's talking about and the magnets yeah, yeah. You walk, he walks for something like that is it yeah. like that. Uh, kind of it's a uh, I work more for GPS what's so the company called Stat Sports. Stat Sports. They wear the little pods on their back and it tracks. It's a complete breakdown of how far they run, how fast they run. And it's all just tracked back to iPads and phones and you can see everything. All the coaches can see everything. Yeah. So instead of a one plan fits all, all the the coaches come up with their plan and then they look at the data and then they tailor for each individual. Because right, you could be a certain weight, certain size. Uh, you're not going to all train the same way. It's what's yeah. good for him isn't going to be best for him. So the coaches at the highest level just use this stuff to um, make sure there's no lazy yeah. fuckers. Yeah, but it's actually available. Those yeah. lazy ones. I'm getting it? some of them. Yeah, it's, uh, it, yeah. I'll, I'll hook you up. Do you want one? Who's up with a few of them? Stats bar shit. Yeah, I'll get you one. You stick to one. Imagine not seeing them in the in the cage. No worries. Yeah. Like, imagine yeah. seeing how, how much people were moving. I heard he wasn't. Yeah. And you would be like bleeding, sticking on a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so he covers ground gonna be a Black Friday sale now as well so keep an eye, keep an eye out for that Black it was yeah. like the little rascal the horse like faster 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 wow that is fast yeah I move a lot in these yeah. over but that's good you need yeah. to be like yeah. a, you know a rabbit on the on the go like that so then the idea right is that I always when I even looking at you in Taekwondo I was like whole work ethic alone would make a really really good at MMA yeah. but then the idea is sometimes there's like I won't say it's like there's like a bad blow between kickboxing and there's not but no. MMA is, is is it's only coming I'd say like I'd say you're going to be a really good actually ambassador for or not even ambassador but telling people like it's not what you think because we've been doing this for years like when you go and do interviews after when uh, the more success that's going to come to you and you know, it is going to come to you and um, you just don't even you know even I know you see it but you don't see how much is actually going to come to you right you got people are going to be asking you, yeah but like but kickboxing or but, uh, MMA yeah, you know I mean? it's very brutal. It, that's what. But I'm not gonna lie, I probably had that. Yeah, good view of it as well. I did. I was only looking the other day when I was I was googling my name to see the if they updated me on topology, and I'd done an interview like probably about three years ago, and they were like in the they asked me would I do MMA, and I was like nah, wouldn't be not into it. Me. That's mad, and I was like look at me now, I'm actually doing it. Oh yeah, we say the best way to get people into a, a, a MMA is curiosity. Yeah, curiosity. But I was curious about jujitsu. That's how I ended yes. up starting. I didn't really, well, not that I didn't want to do MMA, but I wasn't, got, like, it wasn't in my head. Yeah. And I remember you were away the Friday. I was doing yeah. jiu-jitsu and you were away the Friday and I ended up injuring someone. I remember. Uh, but Kiefer was like, jump My into the class. My first ever injury. Cheers, Kiefer. <laughs> yeah, first ever injury in the whole time. And it's like, nice and shiny. I didn't even yeah. know what an underhook was. I didn't know what. No. And the mad thing is, right, that injury kind of led in the direction for even the girl that did it. They, Shannon, Shannon's doing it. Yeah. And I met, like, it. 
like so Shannon was kind of like training and then all of a sudden it was like right do you know what she's not going to be training but here's something and she's doing the cut cut yeah, now yeah. and she's flying yeah. with it now you know what I mean so she's, she's working my hands she's working with Joe Clifford so we've had Joe Clifford on the podcast as well Joe's like does for the UFC and so then and how crazy is it going to be someday when this all comes full circle and like maybe you're walking to the cage and it's like it's, it's Shannon like wrapping yeah. hands and all for the UFC it's like everything happens so for it, it is it's weird well, look I don't believe in all that destiny stuff and all that we're but sometimes it rolls in and it's, it's, like, it's crazy so like I don't say to people when they're, they're coming in from kickboxing or taekwondo or anything like that I don't say um, like, this is different this is going to be I, I could have let, let them experience it yeah, themselves. I did, <laughs> like, I did what straight was your away. And listen, because slipped in the air, double legs. What like, was oh, your first no. experience of? Because uh, I remember the first few weeks and just looking at you, and it, it looks like someone drowned. And <laughs> I like, was like, "Why am I good at this?" Because <laughs> you go from twenty years, like, and I, I admire that the most because you don't know whether the person's going to keep getting back on the bike because it's very easy to say to be it like was tough on telling you. There was times where I was kind of just like, "Ah, oh, fuck this." But then I loved it as well. I really loved the jiu-jitsu part more. And then it was it sank into loving the MMA part. But definitely at the start, I was like, this is mad. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. mad. Like Isn't when it? you when you would have looked at, when I would have looked at jiu-jitsu before, I would have been like, what are they doing? But then when you start to do the classes and look and the details are broken down, it's like, oh my God. That's amazing. What would your advice be to somebody coming over from say, take one down and keep on? Because this has had to happen a little bit more. And what I love to do is I love to, um, <clears throat> I love to include everybody to Together. So we love yeah. martial arts to be a part of all of these things as well. So the idea is <clears throat> like we use the, the kickboxing coaches and the taekwondo coaches and the, and everybody gets together as this one like and if anybody wants to do mixed martial arts, there's kind of like a set standard or a road for it, you know what I mean? Yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. And and something can dip in, but there's none of this like I'm leaving and and how dare you know? Because yeah. that's not nice either. So somebody that wanted to do try MMA, like could still link it with the coach, but they're training MMA, but that that they shouldn't. Some people, you know, some people are like, are you, one or the other, you can't have both. I know, I know. Well, and it shouldn't be like that. And you know what the mad thing Cause is? Because they all do help each do other. You know I think jiu-jitsu helps with nearly everything in life, even work. One. Like when I go to the morning <laughs> class and then go to work, it's like, you're way more efficient. You're a happy fucker, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up, yeah, you know what I mean? I'd be like, oh, yeah, hey, ho. Boy, because she's happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I don't work there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's one pill fixes all for jiu-jitsu and that is what we say. Like and you would have started as a total beginner in jiu jitsu coming in. Now people would have been like, like people on the outside would say, yeah, yeah, but you had kickboxing, so that means that that means like nothing. basically nothing. It's a beginner, like nothing it's a at beginner all. Thing all over it again. I remember I was like partnering up with Sarah loads at the start, and she was so good. I used to have Sarah her head She's unreal. Yeah. She's unreal. great. She's, she's and the mad thing was she was up in there. She was actually in the centre with us at that time as well. Yeah, she would have yeah, been crossing by been there, each yeah. other, and not even knowing who she was, but she's a little legend. And not she even helped me a lot. Yeah. At the start. When you got to um, so your advice to somebody coming over, what would you say? Well, see that program that you have running now, the, the big before, before beginners, before beginners, unreal. Yeah, unreal. I wish I had had that. How cool is to see that happening? Like, like this is the last week, and we went at eight weeks for eight weeks. This is, and the idea is, we really, wanted because the parents and stuff like that, I can see it in their eyes. I can see them itching for it. Yeah, and I try, I try to make something weird, like, so especially like live teaching it as well, which is someone that's so approachable. Yeah, um, and such a person that is like, like everyday life, normal. Yeah, but yeah, a ninja but in the evening. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Bit of both. <laughs> a bit of both. Like, and then and then you have like Andy. So Andy would have been training in the kids' classes when we start. Andy would have been like, so, yeah. And now he's like, as I said, so he's coaching it for me. And it's um, we've the success rate. I think it finished like at eighty percent people. This is the last week, That's and they stayed with it. And I like this now. Like, give me more. Yeah, it's addictive. It's extremely. But addictive. like, even at the start, like we, I didn't have that. But like, you still. There's so many people in the class that help you in any way. It's like yeah. when you're like, oh, what's this? People don't judge it around. <sighs> like, it's just like, oh, yeah, it's just this, 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 this. And you're like, all right, sound. And then you just do it. Yeah. Like, it's just... It's like knitting it weights. Yeah. <laughs> I actually want to go out and do a jiu-jitsu class now. <laughs> I know, I seen your post today. She was like, um, I want to go back and tell I was like, jeez, I'm not warming you up. <laughs> Five days, I was like, not another one. I know, but it's the worst warming someone oh, up, isn't it? Because they're bursting with, like, adrenaline and all. Yeah. And I just can't wait to go and out boxing the head off you're like ah, and you can't even say it because they're just about to fight no it is so your record now uh, you're 4 and 2 so and uh, you're, you were like don't say that the other day. 4 and 2 so that means you have I want me maths on this would be what an 80% uh, record from your fights that you've won and you have 3 finishes four, 2 finishes 2 finishes two so 50% finish, finish rate right? yeah and, and you've learnt as well on the idea of like 
like overextending and like um, getting caught in, in arm bars and getting caught in like like the, the stuff you could be winning a fight in MMA that's what makes it so beautiful it's like yeah. chess and you so get fast caught. it just switches it, it just switches and it's like I'm winning I'm winning oh my god oh my god I'm, yeah. not, I'm not winning like so, my fight in ROM you're fighting wrong. The first, actually, we, we go to the jiu-jitsu competition first. So you jumped into the jiu-jitsu competition um, and, and you met the air cauliflower protection thing as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Sean is off talking to some cauliflower air protection thing. Yeah. And she has like, <laughs> she's like a half a cauliflower air. And that's always the... the, the, the that like, was when it was real bad as well, wasn't it? It yeah. was huge. It was, I was only after getting that and it was like, it needs to be drained about 10 times. It turns people stage. off, it was the cauliflower airs. But they, them yolks are great. Yeah, you know no, they're unreal. They actually they haven't got any worse since. So they mould in and stick in. Now, to be honest, I have to say, even for, I apologise, but I was a little bit sceptic. I was like... I know you were. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I'm yet to see something that works, you know what I mean? Or maybe I was jealous. Yeah, because yours are full. Yeah, you <laughs> bastard. You <laughs> bastard. And that was it. Listen, we had to mould these and make them look like ears. But like, we had FA Cup they ears. They suit you. Yeah, they do suit me yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They got smaller, but me ma, I remember me ma. I had FA Cup ears I did when I was growing up but then they kind of brought in they smiled and they fitted my head I remember me ma being like when I had one cauliflower ear and one big ear like, you know look what I mean? mine mine are two different sizes yeah, that, that one has grown so much since I had that it's like they shrink or head. something like that but um, you, your ears tell you you are a product of your environment <laughs> yeah and you have hair you can leave it down my ma was like oh you poor ears son you know what I mean she was like devastated she was but yeah, what's your well, manager yeah, yours they, it is devastating look at that that's mad looking Listen, like if you're starting get yourself some cauliflower protection yeah, it's worth the bleeding it's, it's worth not alright don't be lying to me it's <laughs> it would be worse though if I didn't have them protection things Duh. no it would be because I do use my head a lot and, and you can see that that didn't get worse and usually when it kind of like it's like Pringles when it pops it doesn't stop and it just yeah, keeps going that's, I think I caught it well not obviously at the right time I should have got them and you had only said it to me I think you jinxed I, I know that's what people say yeah, but a I can, few I, weeks before it do you know you what that like, was? Sean, you should get some. I could see a game. Yeah, me head. And your I head. was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I'm not going to get them. I'm not wearing them because you want me to get the big cup things. Cup and I was like, no, nah, I'm not wearing <laughs> them. Like, like screech powers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your singlet. Your ear exploded. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should have listened. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see this shit. I can see it. It's like, your game is going to give you cauliflower ears. Like someone like Lee Hammond has a head up game. Yeah. And you can see we were talking about that the weekend. And, and no, no one controls his head. So he doesn't have people control his head. Yeah. And he doesn't really have his head in close, ear to ear. Or he would have started with ear to ear. Yeah. You know, so your first MMA fight. So we were up in the Devonish. Yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah, dad is your corner with you yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. We was in there like, this is brilliant. Like, we're, pa- we're breaking down bars here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm uh, walking out Martin Banner. But you, you were nervous there? I know. I can, I can you f- can tell the difference between then and now. <laughs> I was nervous then. I can tell. It. And I'm just like, take a deep breath. You're going to be okay. You know what I, I mean? Like, what the fuck is going to happen now? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to do great, to be honest with that, because. Um, you were fighting, fighting a girl that was a striker as well. No, yeah. good, good for you. Good, good yeah, girl as well. Yeah, she had good jiu-jitsu. Yeah, she was no. a blue belt good as well, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah so you, you didn't go in, in the in the shallow end. You know what yeah. I mean? You went in the deep end. Mm. And then it was just kind of like, if you look back at that fight now, you'll see a massive difference. Ah, in what you, you can strike, but there's like, the striking for MMA and the striking. I'm already explaining that to you at the start. Yeah. Like the phone box, like not leaning off your hips and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and I was kind of doing a little bit of that in that fight. Yeah, we're like, oh, yeah. You know? And at the start, I was like, pure style. I think I just went back, as soon as they said fight, I was like, went back to a point fire. Yeah. For the first like 15 seconds, and she was milling the legs off me. And I was like, oh, here, wake up, Shauna, come on. Yeah, you need to start. <laughs> I need to start hitting this one. Yeah. We were going through. She was through, swinging. We were going through fight names the other day. Wait, you hear this one. All right. <laughs> She was barking at people in the audience. was saying, Sean at the bark on Bannon. <laughs> like, no, no. Gary was like, make a noise at them all. I was like, ah! No, I was like, we didn't say bark. I listened to this. Count is mark a bitch. I like that one. That's what are you thinking that is yeah. a savage name. What I was saying. It's, Mark a bitch. it's a bit long. You know I don't what like I mean? Any of them, to be honest. Like if someone's name Went was somewhere. Countess, <laughs> if someone's name was Countess or something, we could call them Mark a bitch. Something. I'm keeping that. Has don't a ever, fighter I has, love that. has a fighter ever uh, had their fight name sponsored? Like so. Any sponsor? Yeah. <laughs> Sean at Lifestyle Sports Banning. <laughs> <laughs> could make some money off that. That's not a bad old bleeding bit. Way to do it. What's that company you were talking about, you? Sean is that sports banning. That 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 sounds good. And you're like yeah, a rabbit yeah. in there. Doesn't it? Yeah. Let's hook it up. <laughs> Let's hook and, it then, up. <laughs> and then as as you go higher and higher, you can like eventually it'll be Sean and Nike banning. Yeah, like yeah. Be a good or Sean the blue chip Adidas banning. You know what I mean? I'm onto something here. Sean and Microsoft banning. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's Maybe a good one. Good money off you should them. just do that one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just go over that. What do you call Paddy? 
the lion's hula hand. <laughs> See. That's okay. class. That's a good one, isn't it? That's class. Deadly. So then we get to the championship. So uh, Europe, Europe was the first time where I felt that you were literally going to be on your. Uh, in your in your kind of comfort zone, yeah. where it was a base thing, and I knew that that suit you more than it would suit the MMA guys, because yeah, yeah. MMA guys is eight weeks and then like that big huge climax, and then it's over. Where to you, you're used to fighting and then resting and then fighting and then yeah. resting and, and going again. So we knew that suit you. Now the start, really two good rounds, awesome rounds, mm. uh, but it was uh, I I know I remember I said it to you. It was like. I'm kind of happy that happened, but I'm not. And you were like, "What are you saying?" And I'm yeah. like, "You got two really good rounds, and you see how it goes." But then you got to find out what will you have to be uh, switched on in there all the time. Yeah, point. always. And I kind of just kept the same rhythm in the whole fight, didn't I? Yeah. And she just caught me, took me down. Yeah, and it was good. Like, Scramble. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. That's what happens. I was like, ah. Uh, yeah. The back step oh. instead of stepping she over. Back, and the child stepped off, and she was out. And when we look back at it, it was like. Motherfucker, you know what I mean? But that still kills me. I know, it's so. <laughs> but, you know, but you came back in, you literally demolished armbar defences. Yeah, and then, I give people my armbar. You know even I mean? still, I do. So even like, she's been going on with the Ash and stuff like that now, she has as well. So Ash and Daly, and Ash and Daly has a serious armbar, yeah. you know what I mean? And the idea of like, but being able to get that information now coming in, as I said, there's a whole new wave there. So for Taekwondo people, for Jiu Jitsu people, there's like, there's people like kind of at the, the gates now ready to welcome them. But mm. I don't want it in a way where the other martial arts feel like we're taking them away. Yeah. I'd like to bond it all together. Because we're a little island in the yeah. sea. You know what I mean? We could just become a lot of animals and just take on the more be like the Kazakhstanis and the Russians and stuff like that. You know That's what I mean? That's what you have to do. I think with MMA as well, you have to kind of like get your little bits from wrestling, jiu-jitsu, striking, and then you adapt them to how you're going to use them. That was you know once what a I mean? man said it. What was it? Take what's useful, discard what's useless, and add what you own. Yeah. Who said that? Yeah. Who? Bruce Lee. No way. Bruce motherfucking Lee. Yeah. What is that? He knew it. Yeah, Bruce Lee, to, though. Bruce Lee was the original mixed martial artist. So he was the one who was challenging like martial arts against each other. Like so judo fighters against taekwondo fighters and really? stuff like that. Yeah. So he I didn't know that. Yeah, he started like a uh, mixed martial arts back. So G Kundo he came from and he was doing like it, they even have like MMA gloves and stuff like that. You see it. So. He, there's a fight of him online. And it's a uh, it's like it's pretty it's pretty MMA like. He kind of started off that road in the idea of mixing the arts together. So to me, it does go back to like so far traditional yeah. where it should be happening more. And if we did it on the islands, like we just brewed it up where, as I said, we were taking taekwondo coaches in and they were seeing why we're like, Roy, you can't throw a spinning back kick and all that. Why? What do you mean? Because we understand you yeah. can throw it, but the, the the probability of you then taking it and the timing of fight. to me in one of my fights. Yeah, yeah, and we only had the conversation in the dressing room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, we've been walking on a spinning back kick and then I was like, listen. I timed it and wrong. And she has a savage spinning back. She hit me in the chest one day and I nearly had to start get another one to start my heart again. <laughs> I was like, go again, go again. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? I'm back in there. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to live. <laughs> <laughs> but timing. Like, I, I remember even sparring you sometimes and it's like, whoo. Fuck that, take her down. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe, I don't know, I need to kind of <coughs> lighten it up a little bit so that people don't do that. Yeah, but you, you want people shooting at you. Yeah, and the yeah. idea is, it's very hard to go back to kind of, um, to not throw some of the kicks. Like, and, you, and you've got like, I won't, say, I won't say heavy legs, but you've got like strong legs, strong yeah. kicks, and it's hard to bring that back a little bit, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, As well. So then we get to the World Championships. So Shauna, we just got back from the World Championships in, in Bahrain, and you did absolutely amazing out there. You, I think that another fight before then. Oh, we, oh no, yeah, he's sorry. And uh, Nicole Lewis was yeah, going yeah. out, yeah. So, uh, uh, fourth round, rear naked choke. Yeah. So, you got a submission as well. Yeah, how happy wanted you that. Get, <laughs> how happy you to get a submission? I wanted that so yeah. bad. I and the was good thing like, is, you have to get that top game because when, when you do hit people and you do drop them out, when they do shoot in, you have to finish them. Then, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm fine finished. We learned that the hard way as well, didn't we? Yeah. The cage grab our uh, baron. You know what I mean? To get out of that habit. Yeah. So, the fourth out, uh, that, yeah, sorry, skipping that for you. But, so, we're flying out the bar then. You're going to a, like the MMA World Championships in a way. Like that had to be a little bit... Like, was it daunting? Or, I, thought, I thought you really handled it well, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I don't really think it did. No? Like, the like f- I wasn't... <gasps> but, like, I obviously had that little bit of nerves, but I didn't let it get the better of me. I felt so calm all week. A little bit extra nervous for me final, though. Of course. And do you know what the mad thing is? It's like... I could I could feel the different energies. Like yeah. on one day I'm like, no, you're sound, and the next one day, day I was, I anyone could have been on absolutely, front of me. <laughs> and that was what I felt. And I was like, I'm just saying nothing. You know what I mean? She's gonna, you know, count this I was like, bitch. I can't wait to go because like the fight when Nicole was over so fast, yeah. I felt like I didn't really 
get to do it and in that for what I'd been working on the past couple of months so my first fight I was like well, let's go and it, do you know what when, when that fight was over the amount of people that came to me and were like holy shit like she's gonna win it like straight away though people were saying yeah. to me like like um alan philpot and stuff like that they had said to me like that was like that was that was the fight of the tournament so far and even when you went into the dressing room like the girls that were sitting at the table were like oh, yeah oh no oh no because <laughs> no, you had to wait outside the medical room you do and i was like oh no <laughs> i've only seen little clips i can't wait to watch them all back yeah I sit there and, and watch, do you know what we never we, like we've very rarely watched any of me fights back like, yeah uh, till years later you yeah. know what i mean because you're so critical of yourself oh so i'll still find things yeah, like, of course, ah, I, ah. that makes you that's that makes you the world champion that you are um so then the second fight comes on so second day so you, in the world championships what you do is um if you haven't checked it out the IMAF world championships it's this is this is the future of MMA I think especially for athletes because the idea is I think even boxing in a way is changing where it used to be like you you get 10 20 fights and then all of a sudden it's like oh this person's 20 and all but no one's watched until then mm. we're coming out of the amateur thing you've got like I, I seen someone putting a post up the other day um I was actually I think Liam Og shared it and it was brilliant right and it was about like um he was like when if you you're gonna have three and all with your amateur career and you're 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 an Instagram model now with it and all this and all and then you're gonna meet like Michael Mavalov from uh, <laughs> Egypt or something or from Russia yeah, that has yeah. 150 amateur fights has like seven national titles in judo and wrestling and stuff like that and he's gonna he's gonna literally serious change talent. your life he is like there was serious talent over there serious. wasn't there? for amateurs like the level how big like, was that some of them fights were better than pro fights uh, that's what that's what so we, as I said I think there's a wave I think there's a wave now where like, the next wave coming through I think people from the UFC people going into the UFC and stuff like that are going to be these prospects that are like highly ranked after um, amateurs like the, the, the other kid as well I can never forget his name Mo that's why I know it Mo remember the, the fella from England yeah from England yeah, he's, I think he's 27 and all 28 and all something like that now and like literally found his showman and stuff like that as well was yeah. able to like show now and, and wasn't unbeatable got caught in a few arm bars got caught in a but had adversity as well yeah. was able to come through it and I heard him saying something brilliant it was really cool one of our guys um, Josh <coughs> done really really well <coughs> but learned so much from it as well didn't get the win lost the decision but he was in the dressing room uh, after it and Mo had just fought and he turns around and goes to him it was either, I think it was Josh or either Jer and he says to him like it doesn't really matter dude and I uh, fist bumped him and he's like tomorrow I might lose you lose today I win today and then, and then it changes and I was like even the attitude in this yeah. amateur MMA because when you have that attitude it's not that you're going out there you're just not putting as much pressure on yourself which makes you're happy for you yeah. and it kind of puts you in a situation where you're, you're very, having fun you're very dangerous like, yeah. people, we get people that like are literally like like I couldn't hear you I, I, I couldn't move I couldn't see him I was like that's that's nerves yeah. that's not skills and you can't execute fighting and you can't execute a game plan until till that, till that's gone that's yeah. and, and what better place to go and do five fights in a week and, and, and learn this it's unreal unreal incredible so the next day as I said we're rolling out on the Tuesday and um, was it Czech Italy Republic. Oh, Czech Republic yeah. the next day yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and this is good yeah she was she, uh, better than I thought. <laughs> they, they Watching the video, I was like, ah, this is grand. And then I was like, oh, she's yeah. all right. No, she's she, sleek, sneaky elbows. No, she's getting me. Remember elbows? And I was like, don't keep going. Right. Right. <laughs> was it nearly whole back you had? Um, was it that? Yes. That fight as well. I got stood up because I grabbed a, the cage. It's <laughs> another one of these things because it's instinctive. Listen, we all do it. Um, Shauna was uh, on the bottom, but she scrambled out and she went to get up onto her back, but she kind of like, Grab the cage and, uh, and, and, and and fair play to the referee. He was Straight in the list. Away. He, but he was strict on that day yeah, as well. He I didn't think he, like me. He was sound by the end. You know what I mean? Sean is like because I told him what to do. What to <laughs> yeah, he was kind of like don't tell me what to do. Yeah, <laughs> the woman hits her an elbow and she comes over and says, "Don't talk." It was to like me. elbow, and he was like. Us. That was it, and then the next day, um, fortunately, that that was kind of like a, that was a forfeit situation. So, the the girl that was on couldn't compete, and then you get to go through. Because sometimes this happens, you don't make weight or injuries or, or whatever pops up, and then you you ended up in final. the final. Yeah, so fortunately, you got two days then. Yeah, and then we were going in, and not only that, I forgot to mention the first girl that Shauna went in, first you went in, was a champion. Yeah, so yeah. she had won a championships already. So you you wear a, a yellow. So, oh, that's what that was. You know what yeah. I mean? So, it, uh, it's not gold. It's gold. supposed to be gold, I think. But it's yellow. Yeah, yellow. Yeah, yeah yellow. yellow gold. I should have robbed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know. Oh, no, because I'm second. I can't do that. 
Hello darkness, my old friend. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. Um, <laughs> listen, what happens? But to go in there and be able to look over the champion and go out there and and, and, and blitz her out as well, like yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Is 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 top plate draw stuff, and then. He drew China in the end. So China and, and, and she was tough. She was a tough girl and, and she, she kept was. the same gear and she kept the pace and she went forward. Um, it was good to see experience that what, what MMA is going to be like. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and I've told you this. And that's from, what people are going to do to me. I've told you from day one. I've said, listen. They're going to try anyway. So they're going yeah, <laughs> to <they're gonna, laughs> come after you. They're going to wade through shots. They're going to be, the patience at the start and all is going to be important. And then the idea of getting like a razor sharp triangle, razor sharp arm bar, because when you're in there on the ground, it's, isn't it like being underwater and trying she to felt like do she Lego? About five hundred kilos on top. Of trying to do Lego or something like, like get that. Get off me! <laughs> the weight you. You could have quit any time, like, you know what I mean? But you didn't. You kept no, in there. I would have done another ten rounds. And I nearly told the future as well because I was oh. like, it's gonna be. Re- I reckon this girl gets a little bit tired about two minutes into the in, into the um, second round, and then all of a sudden Sean is popping out to her back, and I'm like, oh god, he said rear naked choke second round, and it's like, oh my I god, on her back, and oh I was god. like, this is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> And then she grabbed the cage. And then I forgot. <laughs> and it was just just unfortunate. And the referee put it off. But anyway, you lost the decision in that one, but what an incredible trip. Like, how yeah. cool is it that you're, you're number two in the in the Bantamweight division in the world now? Yeah. You're doing this 1.5 years. I have to, like I do, because I was like, sort of like raging, but like, no, it is. And I gained a lot of experience this Massive. Week. Like, like, to go out there and be able to um, to experience what it's like and to, to, to see what the new product is of, of MMA. Yeah. This is the product I want people to see. This is the one I want, like I want the sports councils to see. Yeah. Um, and like, and, and, and like the, the amount of work that has gone into this with people like 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 Dina Wade, Liam, Liam Ogg, um, Andy Ryan, like John Cavanagh, the amount of times people, and the amount of stuff put Dan Healy, the, um, am I forgetting anybody um, all of Safe MMA uh, Yanni all of these people that le- like have been walking under the ground for this as well and and it's it's mad to see what the product is coming out now if sports can, if Sports Ireland uh, I think looked at this with a proper way like the other day a half a million was given to the tennis clubs um, that was there's a, there's a tennis club in Clonsky I think it was resurfaced and stuff like this now listen there's no tennis clubs in Jobstown. There's <laughs> none get, in Tallinn, remember? They might get you yeah, together. Yeah, get out of the tennis clubs they, in Tallinn. Just to clarify, they did get, I don't think they got the full half million. Did no, they, they got a hundred. Some of it went to the GAA and some of it went to, but a good chunk of it, I think it was like a hundred and some went to the tennis club. That's just Which crazy. Is, I just wanted to say that because you know, they'd, well, be, no, listen, they'd we, be jumping at us. Absolutely, man. If people knocking on me, oh, you were wrong, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? But tennis not thinking about what they actually said. <laughs> people come at me and go, yeah, but what about this? And it's like, yeah, well, like, but I don't see you fighting what I'm actually talking about. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I'm not by numbers, but, you know. Yeah, no, I do agree. But how crazy is that MMA has, like, literally all of these these trips are paid for by, by the athletes and the coaches. So the coaches have to pay for this stuff as well. So yeah. I pay what you pay going out. 800 euro. So it's 800 euro for me to go out and pay. Now, that's not on anybody. Registration. Other, registration. Yeah, to sit Never there and, and scream rest. abuse at people. <laughs> <laughs> like, go on, go on, up, down. <laughs> but, like, it, it's... If we get to a situation where we have, um, if we, we recognise this sport, and as I said, we link in uh, the other martial arts, so they don't feel alienated, the ones that are here a lot longer than mixed martial yeah. arts, and we can bring them all together, I think we could have a product where we have just an extra championships for maybe fighters that, that cross train. Yeah. So fighters that like, so say Jack Woody for an idea, like now, I know that I know that boxing doesn't allow this, so you're not allowed. Yeah, to, you're not allowed in boxing. You're not allowed. To me, I encourage everything. I had a kid out there saying, I really enjoy dancing and I said why don't you go and try dancing for a few months because that might be what you're doing and it'll complement your jiu-jitsu and yeah. training and anyway if you can learn something you can learn anything absolutely you know, if you can accept it like do you know what I mean I think jiu-jitsu is a great tool it's a, it's a great um, it's a system for that in a way of like learning how to learn yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. and if you can learn jiu-jitsu like listen like you learn off jiu-jitsu Gary jiu-jitsu is the toughest I learn jiu-jitsu uh-huh. Gary agree with me like, like, like learning and he and, has like, so he's art- much knowledge he's artistic like, yeah. and, he's not, like, and it, 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 it suits the artsy people you know the people yeah. that like know how to like they see kind of the product of what's going to happen before yeah. it happens and that's the way I look at it like I can kind of see what's happening and that's what I get excited about so at the moment nobody like because I, I, like, I got a message off a guy listening the other day and he was like the the uh, the Ardesh was up from Sinn Fein was up in uh, Derry and he's like you're out rolling with your mates you should be up in the Ardesh fighting in a corner now obviously this guy's probably sitting on his couch too <laughs> but he didn't realise that he was out coaching a group of athletes on the Irish team that were self paid. 
by me, by them, and then my 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 business had to be run, and that has to be paid for too, as you're yeah. running. So you're out there and you're paying for all of this, where like sixteen million a year goes to to, to greyhound racing. So we need a system in this country, I think, that if we link all the martial arts in, that we can we can we can we can fix this, you know, and, and make sure that more that be more that be more. Yeah, but think about one point five years what you just did, yeah. you know, like and 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 obviously there's a lot more opportunities in um in going forward. Now, yeah. gonna be bold. What? What's the, what's the end? When you hang up your gloves, what are you doing? What have you got? UFC champion. UFC champion. That's what I thought you'd say. Less. <laughs> yeah, nothing less. And there's, there's, there's nothing more. Like, why, why would you say anything less? No. So the idea is that to stick this out and, and make it to the UFC and, and, and get that belt. Yeah. And bring a big shiny one back to Ireland. Yeah, back to Tally. Back to Tally. Back to SVG D24. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And, and, and Ireland. Um, yeah, daddy. We think we leave it at that. Yeah. Congratulations again. So, multiple kickboxing champion, world silver medalist. And before I check out there, I think that's everything. I have a horrible feeling that I'm forgetting something, but uh, we can add it in next week's podcast. We get that feeling every yeah. week, you know what I mean? But listen. I felt like that in the airport all day yesterday. <coughs> that's my life. Because you didn't have a bag. Normally you have your bag with you. That's weird. That's yeah. my life. Yeah. My whole life. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, thanks to Bahrain. Thanks to anybody that <coughs> uh, helped out sponsoring the athletes uh, with GoFundMe's. Um, and anybody that oh, would does shout want to come out on. To yeah, shout out to your sponsors. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Sweeney's Garage and Deloitte and Healthy Kitchen. Thanks for sponsoring me for the bar round this year. Thank you. And the old cauliflower there got, a, the got an old plug, yeah? You got yeah. a plug already, so that'd be great. <laughs> 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 Look after yourself.